Welcome to Unlocking the Bible Lesson 2. In the last lesson, we learned several things. We learned what sin was. Sin is disobedience. And we also learned that sin brings forth death. We also learned about the love of God. And we learned about how God loved Adam and Eve so much that he created a substitute death. And an animal died in their place. We also learned that man's way of dealing with sin is never accepted by God. Adam and Eve tried covering up their nakedness by using fig leaves, but God rejected the covering, and He killed an animal and used its skin as a covering for their nakedness. Only God can deal with sin, and God's way requires the shedding of blood. We are going to continue today's lesson with life outside the garden. We will be looking at the story of Cain and Abel, the story of Noah, and the origin of languages. Let's start with the life outside the garden. Adam and Eve had two children. They were Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel represent two different types of people. One who totally trust and obey God, like Abel, and the other who believe in God but think that they can do things their own way. And this was Cain. Let's look at their story in Genesis chapter 4 verses 1 to 5. And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of sheep. But Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. The Bible tells us that Cain and Abel brought different offerings to God. Cain brought um, the fruit of the ground, which would, which would be a crop. And Abel, Abel brought the firstlings of his flock, which would be an animal. Um, but we are, we are told in this story that God accepted Abel's offering, but not Cain's. And as a result, Cain was very wroth, or he was very angry, and his countenance fell. There are two different kinds of sacrifices represent two types of religion. One being God-directed, and another being man-created. Both these brothers brought their sacrifice and worshipped to God, but God only accepted Abel's sacrifice. We know that both brothers believed in God, but their belief alone was not enough. God required them to approach Him in the right way. So why did God reject Cain's sacrifice? Remember with me from the previous lesson that God requires a shedding of blood. Hebrews 9 and 22 tells us, without shedding of blood, there is no remission. There must be the shedding of blood for our sins to be washed away. Abel's sacrifice had blood, while Cain's did not. And that is why God rejected Cain's offering. There is a right way to approach God. We realize from this that it takes more than our belief in God to please Him. We must also be obedient to His word. This is our key number one. We must have faith and obedience to please God. Cain should have been judged for his willful disobedience, but God did not judge him. Instead, he extended mercy to Cain and gave him a second chance. Let's look at the story in Genesis chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry, and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desire is for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. Can you see in Genesis chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, how God extended mercy? God gave Cain an opportunity to change his sacrifice. We know that when, when God told Cain, if you do well, will you not be accepted? In other words, God was telling Cain, come on Cain, change your sacrifice bring to me what, what is right, and when you do that, I'm going to accept you. But Cain rejected God's mercy, and in pride and disobedience, he ended up killing his brother. God did warn Cain that sin was waiting to take control of him, that sin was waiting at the door, that if he did not change his ways, sin was going to come in and take control of him. And God was right. When Cain rejected God's mercy, sin took control of him, and he killed Abel. The New Testament has this to say about Cain, 1 John 3 and 12. Cain, who was of the wicked one and murdered his brother. And why did he murder him? Because his works were evil and his brothers righteous. We see Cain's disrespect toward God in the next few verses. And as a result, God punishes him. 
Genesis chapter 4, verses 9 to 16. Then the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? He said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And he said, What have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So now you are cursed from the earth, which has opened its mouth to receive your brother's blood from your hand. When you till the ground, it shall no longer yield its strength to you. A fugitive and a vagabond, you shall be on the earth. And Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Surely you have driven me out this day from the face of the ground. I shall be hidden from your face. I shall be a fugitive and a vagabond on the earth. And it will happen that anyone who finds me will kill me. And the Lord said to him, Therefore, whoever kills Cain, vengeance shall be taken on him sevenfold. And the Lord set a mark on Cain, lest anyone finding him should kill him. Then Cain went out from the presence of the Lord. God gave Cain one more chance by asking him where Abel was. Instead of confessing, Abel responded in a very sarcastic way. He, he told God, am I, am I my brother's keeper? But God knew where Abel was, but he asked him in hopes that Cain would confess, but he did not. Instead, he responded in sarcasm. His sarcastic response showed his lack of respect and love for God. And that was the last straw. God had wanted to give Cain mercy, but Cain rejected it time and again. God had no choice but to judge him. Cain's punishment for murder, you would say, would seem rather light. In our, in our time today, the punishment for murder would be a life for a life. After all, Cain still had his life. He was only a fugitive and a vagabond. What is a fugitive? A fugitive means to be always running away in guilt. And a vagabond means being a wanderer, never ever able to find rest. But Cain still had his life. But still, Cain's response to this punishment was that it was greater than he could bear. What was his punishment that was greater than Cain could bear? The real punishment is found in verse 16. Cain was cast out of the presence of God. The, pres the principles of God will never change. God will always extend mercy to us. But if we keep rejecting it like Cain, we will too one day live without God's presence forever. From this story, we learn an important lesson about God's character. Judgment is never God's first choice. Mercy is. God will extend His mercy and love to us in hopes that we will change our ways and return to Him. But when we reject His mercy and sink deeper into sin, God's justice will have to judge our sin. That's our key number two. Before God passes judgment, He will always extend mercy.